So the first thing to understand that this is not actually, and you'll find it if you travel, is not a national election at all. It's a federation of state elections. So the stronger the Congress turns out in uh, UP, the luckier the BJP is. And uh, maybe, maybe the Congress is fighting for the 2050 elections. Yeah. <laughs> Anchoring is the, I was going to use a terrible word, but the worst aspect of journalism. If you want to change society, that's what you're a journalist for. I have with me here Dr. Pranoy Roy, the co-founder of NDTV, also fondly known as the grand old man of Indian journalism among... <laughs> among that's better. Uh, yes, oh, you prefer that Veteran. Uh -huh. As a veteran, <laughs> Once yes. you're called a veteran, you know yes. it's over. Yeah. <laughs> and he's written a new book called uh, The Verdict. It's decoding India's election. Uh, something that, of course, Dr. Roy is an expert at, something he's done for years. What we are going to be doing is, uh, the Quint is a young newsroom. We have a lot of young millennial journalists, as they are yes, called. Yes. And they have a lot of uh, questions about, one, how to cover the news, especially in today's uh, increasingly polarized times. Some of them have a little simpler questions uh, about what does it mean to be a journalist. And of course, questions about uh, your journey and back when you started NDTV and started with Broadcast TV. So we're going to get right into it. How is this one election different from the others that you've seen? I'm glad you're focusing on elections right. I, that, that's what I loved uh, talking about I think uh, elections have changed very dramatically in India ever since the first election in 1952 uh, till now it's a total sea change the voter in the first 25 years after 1952 from 52 to 77 used to vote back governments 80% of the time that means it was pro incumbency right. you could be elected, you could not appear at your constituency, you spend the time in Delhi, corridors of power, go back five years later and they'd vote you back. Why? Because it was the era of the trusting voter. A bit naive and uh, full of hope, the hopeful voter, because uh, he saw independence being, India getting its independence and he thought, now we are really on the move. Unfortunately, 25 years later, Things changed dramatically because she felt let down over those 25 years that kept voting them back but they kept doing nothing. So from 77 to 2002, the next 25 years, was the angry voter and more than 70% of governments were thrown out. Uh, they were just furious at what, at the lack of development in their villages and their towns and they uh, would not even distinguish between a good or bad or uh, average government, they would throw them out. Then in the, since 2002, the third phase, and that's the big change, it's a much wiser voter. 50% of governments are voted back, 50% of governments are thrown out. And the ones that are voted back are generally those that have done some work. And work not just in a macro sense, in a very micro sense in villages. And the big change has been the rise in uh, participation of the woman voter. That has been a transformation. Do you feel that local issues uh, will take a back seat in the backdrop of Pulwama and Balakot strike? And also as you're traveling, uh, do you see Modi wave 2.0? I think one of the things that we have noticed when we are traveling is we're often looking at the wrong thing. I mean, it's a, it's a very uh, valid and common question, is there a wave? But again, a big change that has happened is that votes matter less now in winning elections than alliances. They used to hardly matter in the early uh, first 25 years. Now, almost 50% of seats are, in, are won because by forming an uh, alliance or not forming an alliance. So the first thing to understand that this is not actually, and you'll find it if you travel, is not a national election at all. It's a federation of state elections. So I would say when you're analyzing this election, look for each state differently, uh, the issues in each state, look for whether there are alliances or not, because alliances 
are hugely important. People say, but do the votes get transferred from, will the Samajwadi Varti vote get transferred to the BSP? Uh, most of the analysis shows that not only does it get transferred, but when you have an alliance, you get an extra boost of about 8%, because people say, wow, they've got a good chance of winning. So there's a kind of centrifugal effect that attracts uh, voters. So my question to you will be, what would be your advice to a young journalist in this world of post-truth, where it's becoming increasingly hard to convince people of a journalist's credibility? I would say that you just have to do your job and don't worry about the blogs and the people that post, uh, write against you. I think, I think you're right. It's not just post-truth. It's the big problem in globally today, not just with the media, in every aspect of life is a absence of trust. Corporates don't trust yes. each other, governments don't trust each other, media, nobody trusts the media, media doesn't trust the government, uh, which is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the, the building up trust, I think, is the key to uh, st uh, sustainability in this, uh, in this kind of environment. Right. To break through this, uh, disintegration of trust on all fronts. And that trust can be built up through factual reporting, is that what Absolutely, you're and you will get, the more certain people attack you, the prouder you should feel. Right. <laughs> if they like you, you should be worried. <laughs> That's great advice. Uh, we have Indra who has a specific question about the book. My question is with regard to the missing women in your book, actually. Right. That was, uh, as far as I've read, that was the most interesting bit in the right. book. Right. Uh, you mentioned that in the 2014 elections, uh, as many as 23.4 million uh, voters, that is women, were disenfranchised right. and their right to vote was denied. Right. Uh, has the situation improved at all in 2019? And uh, if, uh, if if not, then how do the women swing the vote? Right. Um, okay, those are two questions. One is the missing voters. Now, that is uh, missing women voters. Yes, it was 23.4 uh, in the last election, and it's 21 million now, 23.42. But it's a, not a significant improvement because if you look at the trend line, it's gone from virtually no, no mi women missing to now an average of 19 million over the last 15 years since 2002. So 19 million women, and this time 21 million women who are over 18, who are Indian, who cannot go and vote. And I have seen uh, youngsters, three friends walk into the polling booth, three uh, young ladies, and they'll walk out and one will say, I couldn't vote, my name wasn't on the list. It is shocking. Something needs to be done, and if possible, before this election. You've stressed upon how important alliances are, and there's a lot of chatter, at least on social media, about how Congress has kind of lost their plot because they because of the failure to make alliance in, say, Uttar Pradesh or West Bengal, or even Delhi for that matter. So, what is your take on this? Do you think they have, or is this kind of some posturing that is happening? I think it's not just this election, but the BJP is way ahead of the Congress in understanding the importance of alliances. They understand 4% can transform an election. Congress has no clue. They have no idea. They're terrible at negotiating. Uh, they live in some 1970 dream world, I think, uh, thinking they still dominate this country. Um, and they have, they're hurting themselves by not forming alliances like they cannot even imagine. I gave a, no, I won't give that example now. But, uh, it's just that, for, uh, I think, take the case of U UP. Right. They have a 6% vote, 6 to 8%. If that added to the SP-BSP alliance, that would be another 14 out of 80 seats. That's a huge amount. The, in fact, what they've done is completely suicidal. They put in a very, very strong candidate. The one person the BJP wor is worried about is Priyanka Gandhi. The better she does, the more votes she'll cut from the alliances, better for the BJP. So the stronger the Congress turns out in uh, UP, the luckier the BJP is. And uh, maybe, maybe the Congress is fighting for the 2050 elections. Yeah. <laughs>
I'm opening the floor to questions if anyone has any questions. One of the things that you represent is the news anchoring business. Oh. And Please don't say that. I hate being a news anchor. Yeah. No, oh. so, no, so, no, the question is about where news anchoring has gone in oh, recent right. years. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, not that I would like to specifically name Arnab, but I think, <laughs> but, 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 but I mean, the, that, that kind of shrill anchoring is, I mean, he's, he represents that. And the thing is, you knew him in an earlier avatar. So I want to understand from you, okay, what is it that you think has happened? Is it something that, I'm, I don't, and we're not just talking about him, we're talking about a whole bunch of yes. people who are you know, presenting news, anchoring news in this manner. Is it, is it an act that they're putting on? Because to my mind, even if it is an act, the fact is that it's, it's, it's making an impact of a certain kind. So are they conscious of that? And where do you stand on it? Because you, you certainly don't sound the same. And you knew the guy long ago, so you could just tell us what happened. Are you blaming me? <laughs> <laughs> he was, I think, eight years with NDTV, and he is a really nice guy. I still know him. I still find him a really uh, 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 gentle, lovely person. He's a different persona on television, uh, I agree. Uh, I must say, I, I don't watch it much. Different is putting it mildly. An understatement. Yes, yes, yes. So, there is a trend, I mean, uh, all over the world towards tabloidization of all kinds of news. You have tabloid newspapers, you have tabloid uh, websites, uh, uh, you have sex, even National Geographic is turning sex and violence. They don't do something, they don't say the life of whales, no, the sex and violent aspects of whales. So tabloidization is a trend that's happening all over. Unfortunately in India, the ad agencies are not as mature as the ad agencies abroad, where tabloidization does not get high revenues. The revenues that the sun or the mirror get compare per eyeball compared to say the times is the times get six to seven times higher per eyeball. Although their viewership is one fifth. Here, just what does the, the TRP say? Give them the same amount. When, when uh, uh, advertising agencies mature and say you're tabloid, we, will, we, don't, we don't want to see our, or our client doesn't want to see our product associated with this kind of uh, violence or uh, sensationalism, and we will pay you much less. It will be a, a market-based control on everybody trying to go tabloid and trying to get uh, eyeballs. So there's a, um, a separate aspect which is not talked about, is to understand that at the moment the way advertising is funding television and perhaps uh, websites as well is that it's encouraging tabloidization by just looking at numbers of eyeballs. I wanted to yes. personally ask you about your experience of uh, covering the elections. Two things I wanted to ask you. One is on counting day because that is when of course uh, the, in, the results of the elections are there. On counting day what is the most exciting counting day that you have ever experienced? Ooh, I know the worst. <laughs> okay, so we'll start with the worst and then we can okay, talk about the worst. The worst was when I was doing it from 6 in the morning uh, with Donald Trump versus Hillary. Oh. So it was and a you know, she was winning thing. according to all the polls and everything and then every minute she, he, he was rising, she was sinking. A couple of my panelists just got up and walked <laughs> out, out of Americans. Um, so that was, yeah, very disappointing. Uh, but the best I would say that the early days were better. Why? Uh, because, and you, it was before all of you were born. <laughs> it used I to think take some of us were still here. No, it's not no. that young a newsroom. No, 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 okay, kindergarten maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It used to take three days to count the elections. You wouldn't know what's happening. I mean, you'd get uh, slow progress, so you'd have to do a lot of analysis, a lot of projections. You'd have to stay up all night. So st how many of you stayed up three days and three nights? <laughs> Nobody, right? Um, so those were really exciting because it needed a lot of um, 
maths and statistics to see early trends. And I can tell you how, um, an example, I, I've always yeah. followed elections whether I've been on air or not, right. since a kid. Yeah. And uh, I remember once after the emergency, hmm. 1977, right. uh, we were all sitting around in the Barsati uh, following election results like we did every time, noting down everything. And it was only source was All, all India Radio. And uh, All India Radio was still under the emergency atmosphere. So it would refuse to give, it just kept giving equal, like five, five, 10, 10, 15, 15. Like both sides were always equal. But they would name the constituencies, which ones the Congress was losing, which ones the Congress was winning. And uh, by the ones that the Congress were losing, we knew that this was a sweep for the right. Janta Party. Uh, even when they were saying it's 2020 and 25. So I would say that's probably the most exciting, though it wasn't on air. It was just in sitting in a Barsati. But it was so exciting that a lot of Fenny was had after that. <laughs> Sorry, apple juice. Yes, yes, yes. Nimbu, Scottish Nimbu Pani. No, no Scottish those days. My God, forget it. Couldn't afford it. One of the issues which is being raised a lot is subversion of institutions at this point. And that's, and as someone who's followed the courts and all of this for a while, there's serious concerns. And it's not just the courts, it's other supposedly independent organizations, even including the Election Commission. Now, the thing is that there are a lot of ways to point out here that there, are, there has been a subversion, that institutions are, are a problem. But is this something which can actually resonate with voters? And is, that, is there a way to kind of get voters to care about that and make that a big issue? Because, for instance, that should be a big issue at this election, but you don't really see it being raised in a political rally because I'm assuming it's a quite difficult thing to do. Is there a way to make, that, make people realize that's important and make that an election issue? I would say that, uh, quote, an MLA in Karnataka village, I uh, asked him what are the issues in this elections. He said, look, elections are like an exam with an exam paper and you, or, or many exam papers and you've got to do, get distinction in all of them. So it's not that any one can be the biggest issue of this election and it's just the only issue. Uh, so courts probably will not resonate much in the exam paper list uh, in a village because they're so far removed from, they, they have so many deeper problems. But it will resonate amongst um, opinion makers in this country. And they do have an impact on a lot of other people. So in the urban areas, particularly the uh, metropolitan cities, yes, people are watching and they are worried. Sir, my name is Divyani. And my question to you is that as a sophologist who has traveled the length and breadth of the country, what is the one key thing that you have identified about the Indian voter? I think, uh, well, one very trivial thing. I would have gone to maybe a thousand villages over the years and talked to thousands of people with pilot surveys. You ask them who they go to vote for, they all have one same reaction, a big smile. It's the universal smile of India. Who are you going to vote for? <laughs> it's just lovely. And there's no rancor, there's no aggression, there's anger with the politicians. Voters are really upset with politicians in India, no doubt about that. But I would say, uh, and I don't think I'm exaggerating on this, the Indian voter is today smarter than any other voter around the world. The awareness of issues in the villages from Pulwama to is there 400 people died, not 400 people died, uh, all that, it just comes from them all the time. You said that after 2002, we have a wise voter in the current phase, we have a vote in our voting exercise. So, if there was anything in 2019, Modi Ji is winning or winning, we will do what analysis on which basis we will do. Is there any data we have not yet? हमारे पास जो डेटा है जैसे ग्रोथ रेट के बारे में हमको पता नहीं है कल मैं रघुराम राजन को सुन रहा था उन्होंने कहा क्या कि वी डोंट नो वेदर वी वी आर ग्रोइंग एट सेवेन परसेंट और नॉट जॉब्स के बारे में कुछ पता नहीं है हमको रूरल डिस्ट्रिक्स में क्या है वो तो किस वाइज वोटर ने वाइजली अपना वोटिंग एक्सरसाइज किया या नहीं हमको कैसे पता चलेगा सर नो आई मस्ट से दैट यू मे नॉट गेट गुड 
uh, well, you not may not, you are not getting any good reliable economics data, and it's mm -hmm. a tragedy. But the election commission has got fabulous data. Plus, if you're doing opinion polls, you get great on-ground data, which you can analyze. Uh, unfortunately, though, elections are not just determined by uh, issues. There are a lot of tactics involved. First of all, an issue is only an election issue if it covers two aspects. One, it's got to be important to the voter, say corruption, very important day-to-day -day corruption. I, I tell you, we went to a village, uh, a, the, a widow, many widows, they get a thousand rupees a month. To get the thousand rupees from the, everything is all bank and you know, high tech and etc, etc. But to get that thousand rupees, she has to pay the bank manager 500 rupees every month. What kind of a bank manager sees a widow who's poverty stricken and takes 500 rupees from her? So it's not, it, there are technical issues such as turnout. Who manages turnout better? In America, there's something called the dark arts of voter suppression. Yes. Where certain categories of people are not, uh, things are made very difficult for them to register so they can't vote. Uh, there are many, many techniques. We don't know how much has come to India, but that needs to be studied. But the data on voting behavior and analysis uh, can be done quite easily of why people have voted which way. It could be turnout. It could be uh, uh, a violence just before a, a voting day, you know? And generally we have found that in the wiser voter phase, people vote for MLAs and MPs that do something in their village, their constituency, not just GDP, because GDP can go to the cities, it can go to the richer, it can go to the exporters, but if it doesn't come to their village, they won't vote for that person. Okay, I'd like to end the discussion by asking you one thing that... Uh, Oops. That is, <laughs> that is how most discussions are end. Uh, one, how do you see... I mean, the 2019 elections, the results we will get to know on the 23rd of May, but I think never before has there been such a crucial election on which a lot of things in journalism or being a journalist are also at stake because this is a government that is increasingly harsh on press freedoms. And we are seeing that India is now going towards a post-truth world where for every incident that happens, there are two facts and people can choose the facts that they like. So where do you see the future of Indian journalism? Well, to be honest, actually, I'm quite encouraged by what's happened over the last year. I think if you looked at Indian journalism websites, WhatsApps, messages, Twitter, two years ago, they were really much more obsequious than they are now. Now people are speaking out and speaking out in, in fearless terms. And I really, really find that heartwarming. And you may see a repeat of 77. Right. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.